Um, hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us at our closing panel, um, really our last session of the day. So thank you very much. Um, I'll say it again, if you have any questions, uh, technical or general, please, uh, you can write to me in the chat. Um, so that is it. I would like to invite Karen Cater, the, the president and CEO of Digital Promise, uh, who's facilitating um, today's panel. Uh, so thank you very much. All right, thanks everybody. I'm super happy to be here. Um, great day so far. There's been a lot of information. Um, for this panel, please um, feel free and be sure that you add questions into the chat so that we can bring your voices in, bring your ideas in, or if you have ideas or comments or other kinds of things, um, please um, join, uh, join us uh, in, in that way. Um, Okay, so we have a great panel here. And so to start off, um, I would just like to ask each of the panelists to simply introduce yourself and your current role. So your name and your current role. And then we, after that, then we will do, um, we will go around and have everyone kind of give an opening, opening kind of bit of a presentation. Um, so Dahlia, you want to start? Can't keep, um, I'm just one second. Yeah, thanks. Wait, Dahlia, we, I can't unmute you. Okay. Okay. Oh, now? Yes. Can now we can me? hear you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm very excited and very pleased to be here. Uh, I am Dalia Fenig, uh, Deputy Chairperson of the Pedagogical Secretariat in the Ministry of Education in Israel. Uh, this is the, um, you know, um, this is the unit in the Ministry of Education that is um, um, responsible uh, about all the disciplines, all the teaching of disciplines, all the curriculum that the uh, um, um, prof um, professional development of teaching the disciplines. So this is my point of view here. Uh, how to teach English, uh, history, and the uh, other uh, disciplines. So this is my, uh, my point of view here. Excellent. And Michelle, nice to see you and please introduce yourself. Hi, Karen, thank you. Nice to be with all of you. I'm Michelle Mills, uh, Director of Professional Learning Systems with the Tennessee Department of Education. Excellent. And Ayel, would you like to join next? So, oh, hello everybody. I'm Ayel Ram. I'm a Deputy Director General in the Ministry of Education and in charge of uh, teacher training and professional development. Excellent. And Crystal? Hi, Crystal Bassett, happy to be here. I work as Innovation Specialist in Juab School District. It's a small rural district in central Utah. Excellent, all right. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna ask each of you to give kind of an opening idea. What's one policy idea or one idea that you would like to share? Um, and I, if you have slides, you can share your screen. Um, and again, yes, at the national, state, or, or a sort of smaller district or local level. Um, so Crystal, would you like to start? And make sure you're unmuted. Okay, do you have my screen? Yes. Perfect. So, just a quick note as a matter of introduction. I was a Girl Scout for 13 years. You're seeing me as a child there. And when we talk about digital badging and micro-credentialing, um, I am all in. So I wanted to lead with that. Uh, I'm glad we're looking at the district level first because this is a very small system that I'm working in. Um, in Juab School District. We have had micro-credential policy in place since 2016. Our policy allows teachers to be compensated for micro-credentials as well as pursue a teacher leader pathway. And 
our big question right now is, does early policy result in a loss of flexibility and innovation? Because as we know, as we, I think, talked about already today, this is a changing ecosystem. Um, I'm using as my intro the metaphor of a journey. So the question, how do we plan or budget for a journey when the destination is uncharted territory? What do we pack? Those are the questions that kind of circle around um, my mind. So one piece I think is that you really have to articulate um, your destination. So we knew we wanted to develop teacher leaders. So we crafted a policy that supported that progression. Our personal map allows each educator to curate their own stack based on um, an area of ed elements, core four of personalized learning, and we are in the Digital Promise platform. Another piece, just by way of introduction, as our educators are making decisions, we want them to feel confident that they are moving in the right direction. So our compass is what we call a good, better, best model. And uh, you can see it here, as educators develop their own plans for professional growth, we counsel them to make decisions based on this Venn diagram. So if a micro-credential meets one of these, it's a good micro-credential. If it meets two, even better. And if a micro-credential can help a teacher in all of these areas, then that's the best micro-credential for a teacher to choose. And that was really vital in our policy. It's part of why I wanted to share this out because we have a system of very heavy teacher voice and choice, but we want them to be confident in that decision making. So um, by way of intro, that's what I wanted to share. And I'm just so excited to be here today. Excellent. Thank you very much, Crystal. That's a, that's a good start. Um, chart your uncharted territory and uh, figure out where you're going and determine um, what you might do to get there. And teacher leadership is a perfect example of a really great application of um, educator micro-credentials. Um, Eya, would you like to uh, join us next and kind of talk about your kind of one idea? Can you un unmute yourself, please? Hey, I'm unmuting you, just one second. Let's see when we can hear you. Wait. Okay, now you can hear me, yes? Yes, thank you. All right. Sorry for, sorry about it. Uh, can you see the, the PowerPoint as well? Not yet. Not yet, sorry. It's okay, we are, we're all patient with this technology and doing what to do. online. Um, let's see, now you can see it? I don't know. No, uh, share the bottom of your screen and then yeah, the first what, one. That's what I've done. Let's try it again, like this, screen. And uh, now? Still not? No, but do you want to just go ahead and right. talk? Yeah, and sure. Talk? Sure, sure. It, it doesn't matter so much. Okay, so um, uh, I think that um, uh, Dalia and I will maybe tell the story from different angles. So it gives you the, the, the big story of micro credentials now in Israel. But as, as I see it, um, I can say that uh, we are looking for ways that the teachers will learn uh, have a clinical learning, what we call clinical learning, that it's not only for the accumulation of hours of financial rewards, but we want to uh, look at the teachers as, as uh, professionals that uh, explore their own field of work with peer groups. And we created in the last uh, few years a lot of uh, PLCs in Israel 
Uh, I think we got that uh, around 25% of the teachers in Israel are already connected in PLCs, in the disciplines, or inside schools with leading teachers. And uh, uh, lately we saw that uh, just like uh, last week, uh, we got a new um, report from the OECD that measuring innovation in education. And it showed that uh, Israel had the biggest um, step towards innovation in uh, professional development, that uh, uh, the, the main thing that they show that uh, how, how much peer learning there is between uh, teachers. And we saw it also in Talis in uh, uh, 2013, that Israeli teachers really uh, learn a lot in, in peer learning and they love it, they want it. And we think that that's the way to be more professionalized if you are not just, you know, hear from someone what to do, but you collaborate with your uh, friends. So, uh, but we understood that the sense of community cannot be only inside school or only with peers that uh, learn uh, teach the same discipline around you. So we uh, created throughout the years, uh, um, we have in, now in Israel 2,200 uh, digital courses that uh, almost uh, 30,000 teachers are uh, learning through this uh, process. And uh, some courses, of course, include face-to-face -face, uh, meetings and they are, of course, interactives and we created a lot of rules and guidelines. How can we make it? And, but in the last uh, year and a half, we understood that we have to go somewhere else because 30,000 out of uh, uh, 180,000, uh, it's, it's, it's nice, but uh, we want that it won't be only 20% of the teachers are being involved in digital communities, but we want to, or peer-to-peer -peer learning, but we wanted them to, we, we want to get to around 40% of the teachers are a big part of it. So, and then we, we discovered this, the, the idea of the micro-credentials that uh, we hope that it will uh, not just bring more teachers into this uh, field, but also create the idea of, uh, of something that it's short, it's limited by time, uh, it uh, can be applied, and it involves peer learning in the sense of uh, evaluation and, uh, and, and the idea of clinical learning is expanding to many, many ways. Excellent. Thank you very much. I love the last sentence, clinical learning, the way that doctors learn um, on, in hospitals, using cases, using, you know, working with patients, um, with doctors as mentors, want, walking with them. Many times in education, there are so many different ways of learning things in addition to courses. Um, and so really figuring out all those ways and peer-to-peer and, uh, -peer as well. Dahlia, would you like to uh, go next and, and add to that or say something different? Hey. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, and can you see the PowerPoint? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, I want to speak uh, about uh, three things at the beginning, the need, the channel, and the methodology. Um, one of the main issues we deal with is the need uh, to develop the support and support a lifelong learning culture among the teachers. We want to make this kind of culture adopted by teachers, and we find that the right channel to do it is uh, to provide a wide variety of innovative professional development methods. Micro-credentials is one of the methods of, uh, to do it. Uh, I want to, to show you, so lifelong, lifelong learning, this is the need, and online uh, uh, learning is the channel and uh, the methodology is micro-credential. So I want to show, uh, to do a short uh, overview 
um, on the evolution of uh, distance learning uh, uh, PD in uh, Israel. We began, so until uh, year two, uh, 212, um, all the professional development was face to face because you know, uh, the distance learning, the online learning was not available. And from the uh, about 2000, two disciplines um, started to, uh, to develop courses uh, by distance learning. And from uh, 2010, all disciplines employ this, uh, this uh, channel. Um, I mean that uh, um, almost one course in each discipline was by this way. Uh, at 2013, uh, we develop a, a model, we call it a unification versus uniqueness. It's a model that based on um, generic uh, courses that um, um, uh, deal with the practices of teaching and uh, each discipline could adjust uh, these courses um, to, 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 the, to, you know, to the specific needs of the discipline. Uh, it, I cannot, um, uh, I cannot uh, explain it uh, uh, in this short uh, meeting, but it's uh, uh, very interesting for maybe for other meeting. Mm -hmm. So from uh, 2018, we, we started with the micro uh, as, a, as a pilot. Um, and uh, we, we hope and we think that this is a very good uh, channel, but it is not the one way, and we have to choose a, a for each need what is the the best methodology to uh, for the PD uh, for teachers. Excellent, thank you so much. And um, perhaps a little bit later, I might come back and ask you if you have any results from your pilot. But I'll we'll go on to. Um, to um, Michelle uh, first, but maybe if you can think a little bit about that. Um, Michelle, could you give us your opening idea? Yes, hi, Karen, thank you. And I will uh, attempt to share my screen. Thank you for your patience. Okay. Can you see that there? Yes, thank you. Yes, okay, fantastic, thank you. So my, uh, the opening idea that I wanted to share, uh, I think is around micro-credentials is captured really well uh, with this quote, which, um, which reads, never give from the depths of your well, but from your overflow. And it was uh, from the great philosopher Rumi. And I feel that this connects uh, well to micro-credentials because it's this underlying is this idea of uh, such a depth of knowledge that it then we don't that teachers don't necessarily have to dig deep to pull it out and teach children, uh, but the learning and the knowledge is is uh, overflowing so much that they can give from what's bubbling over at the top, and so I really um, see this connection to micro credentials um, because it's a way to provide teachers with that abundance of knowledge and abundance of learning, of course, captured through uh, competency-based um, education and then, you know, the evidence that is captured around micro-credentials. But uh, uh, again, just this idea of providing teachers with so many opportunities to learn. We know that they, they, are, they are already engaging in so many opportunities to learn, but then the micro-credential just supplements that. Uh, and so then taking their knowledge and their skills both to this level of overflow out of which they can then um, 
share and, and teach their students from. And secondly, more directly uh, related to the main idea of the policy question, um, the, the idea that I wanted to share is a forward thinking idea around competen competency based licensure advancement. Uh, this is, we have not, I want to make it clear that we are not uh, at this place in Tennessee yet, but I do believe that as the evidence and the research around micro credentials continues to come in and come forward, and as we uh, become more um, adept at uh, understanding and implementing micro credentials throughout our state, we will gain the confidence that's necessary um, for state agencies and ed prep programs to then feel comfortable using a, uh, a competency-based model like micro-credentials for licensure that goes beyond uh, many of the things that are currently in place like a praxis test or a, or a uh, um, static kind of um, knowledge level assessment. Thank you. Excellent, thank you. And um, I think also interesting is the way that Tennessee has approached this is not as a, to replace something, but to add another pathway, to add something to the mix so that people can have this as a choice. Um, in some cases, somebody might live very far away from a place to take an actual course, but there are other ways that they can learn. So this really does sort of uh, validate and honor all the different places and ways that people uh, can learn today. Um, so I, I will open it up to the panelists if you would like to respond to something that you heard um, from one of your uh, one of your other uh, other panelists. And you can maybe I don't know thumbs up or whatever or maybe you just keep unmuted so that you can just talk. I think that probably will work. So you want you want me to continue? I would love it. Yes. All right. So I uh, now I'll try because I want I really want to show you something. Okay. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> and we have, yes, we really want to see it. Yes. Okay. Do you see it now? No. You still don't see it, huh? No, I don't know what the problem could be. Uh, All right. Very good. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> So that, that's what you lost before, but uh, it doesn't matter. I want to show you, uh, these, these are my kids. <laughs> so, um, and I wanted to input it because uh, I feel that the, the opportunity that uh, the micro credentials is really belong to something that I'm uh, having this last week. So this is my middle son. Uh, the small one, and uh, he has a, a dyspraxy, which is a, some kind of a, like you have this uh, graphy, this calculia, so there is something called dyspraxia. It's connected to a, a problem in, uh, in talking. And uh, he was uh, in special education for, for two years. And uh, now we managed to take him out from special uh, education kindergarten and put him in a regular one. And he managed very well. It's a miracle. But yesterday I sat with uh, his, uh, uh, with his uh, uh, kindergarten uh, teacher and she said, I don't know what is this proxy. And... Uh, she knows nothing how to deal with it. And because his, his situation is not so bad, she doesn't see it at all, and she cannot help, help him at all. Not just, not just, not just her. And uh, that's something that now in Israel, we have a new rule uh, in the, the, the parliament made, that we need to bring as many, rule of inclusion, integration, to put as many kids of special education inside regular classes, which is great. But the question is how the kindergarten teacher can know what is this proxy. She won't go to do a special education teacher training. And even to take a, a, a course in of 30 hours somewhere, it won't be around this. 
But so now what we are creating, we're creating a bunch of courses, of micro-credentials courses, around 50 courses that deals with different special education fields that every teacher and every kindergarten teacher can take exactly what they need to, their, to the kids that they have now in schools. Mm -hmm. So we are creating now a lot of courses around this uh, field. So that's a that's a huge opportunity that we have now to and, and it's a, just an example how the micro connections can give a solution to the biggest challenge that I have as a family and my and but uh, but I'm talking about all Israel because of this new rule it's a huge uh, challenge that we we have. Thank you very much for sharing that. That's great. Yeah, go ahead and keep going. Do you have a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I'm, uh, that's the next. Okay. Does any, anybody have a, a response or, a, or something to add? Karen, I'll add, this is Michelle. Um, just adding about uh, following the theme of the opportunity for micro-credentials um, and how it can be a solution to challenges. One challenge that we have in Tennessee is um, with the uh, CTE courses, um, having work-based learning opportunities. So many of our traditional teachers are not qualified or don't have the um, knowledge to come in and teach a very specialized um, course, for example, uh, mechatronics, which is way beyond my head. I don't even know what it is, but I know that we need mechatronics teachers. And so those teachers need to come from that particular field in, in that industry. Um, but they're already professionals. Many of them are making a salary well above a uh, teacher salary. And that there's little motivation to want to go back to school to an education prep program to become certified to then come and teach that course. But they have the heart and the desire to share their learning with the students. So we are looking very closely at being able to use micro-credentials as a way for them to gain the teaching license and certification that they need rather than having to go back, as uh, Eyal said, and take, you know, 20 to 30 credit hours because they've already been to school. Many of them have their master's and in some instances they even have their doctoral degree, but they are unable to meet the teaching qualifications. So micro-credentials are viewing as a real opportunity to open that up uh, to provide our students with as much opportunity as they can by uh, creating alternative pathways into teaching for uh, people coming from other specialized industries and areas. Excellent. Two great examples. Others, Crystal? So I'm wrapping my mind around this, this concept, and it's always been something that absolutely appeals to me. We're meeting the needs of teachers so they can better meet the needs of students, but at the same time, we're modeling, and this is something that's important to me in my role, we're modeling for our teachers the type of learning that we want our students to experience. All of these elements, growth mindset being one of them, competency-based, anytime, any place. And as we offer those opportunities to any type of learning, I do think we're unlocking possibilities for um, the education we're creating within our schools. So I just wanted to kind of tack on to that idea. What else? Other benefits? Other benefits and opportunities you see with micro credentialing? Yes, I want. Please. Okay. Okay. Uh, I want to speak about, uh, I think that it is a culture shift and the challenges uh, are also um, opportunities. So um, I, can, uh, I can speak about uh, four uh, changes that each of, uh, each of them can be, it's, it's a challenge and also opportunity. Uh, um, First of all, we have to, you know, distance learning is not uh, so, um, um, not, not all the teachers uh, um, 
are feeling free with it. So um, uh, most teachers are not used to this kind of learning. Mm -hmm. And many simply don't want to, to make the, the effort. Uh, and I think that uh, uh, it is also the opportunity because all students need to, to, to use and to, uh, in their life to use distance learning. So if teacher will use it and will, will, will be, you know, will feel comf comfortable in this uh, uh, distance learning. So also uh, the students, uh, uh, um, they, they will learn how to do it. Uh, the other, uh, the second challenge is uh, documenting and sharing learning products. You know, many teachers, uh, I know that uh, Eyal talk uh, about uh, Israel, that uh, many of the teachers, you know, there is a peer uh, uh, learning, but not all teachers. So uh, documenting and sharing learning products, uh, many teachers feel uh, that uh, uh, they, don't, they, don't, they don't use to do it. And I think it's very important because uh, all the students also has to do it. So uh, it is also one challenge, uh, uh, one, uh, it's a challenge and also opportunity. Uh, the third challenge is independent learner. You know, it's uh, so important for students in these days. So teacher has to try to, to do it and then they will be a model for the students. And the fourth challenge is a peer assessment. Uh, also, it is new for us. And um, I think that the teacher, if they, if they learn how to do it, they can bring it to their classes and to their students. And it's all also very, very important in these days. So all of this, challenges are, um, you know, uh, in the, in the micro-credentials, we, we have to, to, to use it. So uh, I think that uh, it's a very, very um, a good opportunity for the teachers to, to, try, to try this uh, way of learning. Excellent, thank you. Any other follow-up from anyone on the challenges and opportunities? That was a fantastic sort of flyover, uh, kind of all of the real salient um, points around uh, opportunities. Anybody else? Yeah, I, I can add a bit more uh, that I think that uh, the, shift, uh, the shift from hours of learning to competency. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know how we, how can we make it uh, on on a big scale, mm -hmm. but that's uh, that's very interesting. We're still counting the hours now. We give, we say it's not the it's not the really the competency. We still say it's ten hours for a course. But if yeah. all yeah. the change of all the shift of the culture that Talia spoke about will happen, so maybe in uh, in few years. It won't be any more around hours of learning, but about comp gaining competencies. And then think about teacher training like this. It's, we, we can be in a, on, a, on a different uh, place. Absolutely. So that was, so I'm here. Yeah, go ahead, Michelle. I'll just piggyback. This is an idea that I had in a later slide, but um, around this idea of shift, I'm in so much agreement there. And uh, one um, way that I see this shift uh, kind of integrating itself into our current culture is that I predict that with um, what is currently traditional professional learning will be morphed into um, I think that it's competent, a competency-based piece will become the norm, a competency-based piece that is integrated into these professional, the more traditional um, learning opportunities that we have, such that uh, at, you know, within a few years, well, 
some years down the road, we will no longer see the standalone uh, traditional learning. So teachers may be brought together, educators may be brought together for a face-to-face uh, learning opportunity. But then I do see that because of the influ- influence and impact of the micro-credential, they will be sent out with a competency-based assignment or some type of competency-based component uh, with a necessary follow-up. So I, I see micro-credentials impacting prof- uh, traditional professional learning in a way that uh, pushes it to evolve. And as you said earlier, you noticed that our approach in Tennessee, not that traditional professional learning will go away, but it will evolve to become a more effective, um, um, I guess, animal, if you will. Yep. That was a fantastic flyover. Um, If we think about, I I love every single example. Um, AL, we've been thinking a lot about learner variability and all of the difference between students and you know, especially for students that are mainstreamed into classrooms, how do we help those teachers? A teacher may be a very accomplished teacher, taught for 20 years, but never came across a specific um, difference from one child to the next. And how do we help them quickly get up to speed? And then like take that credential with them so they can continue adding on to their list of credentials as they go through their profession. And in some cases, based on those students that they have in their classroom. So I love that example. I also love the industry example, thinking about those special courses, all those things that are that are people need to learn or will benefit from learning and teachers may not even the existing teachers may or may not be interested in it. Um, I don't even remember the example used Megatronics, I guess, was the was the example you used. But there are so many examples from coding design in designing maker spaces there. There just are so many different kinds of things that people know. So that's a great example. Definitely love the, uh, the sum- summarizing around modeling, what learning looks like today. So if students see teachers learning along, you know, on the fly with their students, with other people, with their peers, all of that modeling is incredibly helpful. And competency-based, creating evidence, submitting evidence, thinking about what is it that I'm doing that showcases my expertise. So those are all uh, really, really helpful and moving from ours uh, to competency. Peer support is, is another one. So that was a great flyover of many uh, sort of advancements in, in, in learning, you know, and then in maybe specifically how uh, this notion of micro-credentialing can, can support those, those uh, very important learning, learning um, opportunities. How about barriers? So let's think about, so what are the biggest challenges? And I think we you you ended that session by saying the challenge is how do we get people to stop thinking about time and move to competency? Because even when we have micro-credentials, in many cases, they're being translated back to hours so that people can earn their, you know, units or their credits or whatever they need. So that, how do we, you know, so that, that's one, but what are the other, what are the other barriers to this that we need to overcome? I can speak to that. So one challenge that we are experiencing as a district, right? So go to that very small level. We are relatively early adopters in our state. So now the state of Utah is um, rolling out their own micro-credential platform and exploring policy. And we, I don't want to say we're locked in, but we're definitely on this journey. So we're looking to see um, how do we link the two? How does our existing policy and structure fit into that larger umbrella? Um, And it really strikes to me the need for um, (laughs) high levels of communication and also flexibility that we can have those conversations you know, in our case at the state level, national level, try to see where we can link um, the lessons learned and the spaces that we've been learning in um, to larger systems. That, that's a challenge we are currently encountering. Other challenges? Karen, one of the 
two, I'll speak to two challenges if I, if I may. Um, one challenge is at the very uh, uh, ground level um, implementation level, and that is um, create, helping districts create time for teachers to work on the micro credentials. We're hearing um, currently that most of our um, repeat earners, uh, those having the greatest success, are teachers who have the flexibility in their personal lives to work after school, to work in the evenings. Um, we haven't gotten to the place in Tennessee yet where districts are carving out uh, across the board. We do have a few here and there, but time for teachers to integrate micro-credentials into their PLCs as they seem to be doing uh, in Israel, as I heard AL say. Um, so that is a challenge that we're facing in our state. Additionally, um, another challenge that we're really trying very hard to um, let it not uh, become an, a, a real barrier, but is the balance between teacher voice, teacher voice and choice, as I heard Crystal say, they have a lot of in JUAB, um, but also the alignment mm -hmm. so, such that the teacher selections actually align to district and even more specifically school goals. So how do you give a teacher voice and choice um, and simultaneously uh, support those educators in working toward uh, learnings that will promote the school level goals. So those are some challenges that we're thinking about. Other challenges, Dahlia, any ch other challenges that you were thinking of before we started today that haven't been mentioned? I think uh, we spoke about it. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, there are a lot of challenges, <laughs> but I think that all of them are opportunities. There you are. We are we are all surrounded by uh, entrepreneurs, and we can we can. I think I think that if we are believe that this is a good way, this is the right way. Uh, even you know, in our pilot, we find that it's not so easy, because uh, many of the teachers who learn in micro credential courses are not finishing it. Only uh, about 10% uh, are uh, finishing. We, we hope it will be changed, but uh, it's not so, uh, you know, we are always thinking maybe we have to change something. Maybe, maybe you know, because it is small courses and maybe we ask them to do many, many things uh, too much for, for so small courses. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are always, um, uh, you know, we, we, we are looking for the right, uh, the right way. Oh, not, not the right way, this is not, um, uh, um, uh, you know, we are looking for, we, we have to... The right to side. Find, yes, yes, we are, we are looking our way, but we are sure that it is very, very good way and very important way to our lives. Excellent. You talked a little. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, sorry. Uh, just to add the uh, following, Dalia. Uh, I think that uh, one of the decisions that we made lately, because we we are sitting together, we have a kind of a group that sits together a lot and think about it. And because we felt that many people, they they maybe they learn but they don't finish the course. So we said, okay, let, so let's open all the courses to everybody, and you don't have to finish it. Yeah. Once you want the credit, mm -hmm. you you start to do it like like the MOOCs uh, do it in uh, I don't know in universities, and then it created a lot of another opportunities because then we can open it not just for teachers but for teachers assistants for example we have now um, uh, thousands of uh, teacher assistants that volunteers from all over that came comes into school, and then we open for them all the courses because now it's open course. That if you want the credit, you do. You need. You need to do the assignment and and to really to take a, a to to bring the example. How do you implement the, what you learned? And then we can maybe understand more how people learn inside when they leave. Do they just want to learn about the the chapter of the the knowledge, or they really want to implement it or share it and stuff like that? I, I love all of all of what you both just said. I, mean, I think it comes down to this question of incentives. 
and what are the incentives to number one, learn something. And so the incentive might be, I just have a personal interest in it, or it might be, I have a, cer a certain student like your son in my classroom and I need to learn this, or it might be that it's my school telling me I have to learn it or my district telling me I have to learn it or my state telling me I need to, you know, get a new license. So there are many incentives. Um, and I think, Crystal, can you talk a little bit about the incentives there in JUAB? I think there are financial incentives, correct? There are. Um, and actually, as we were talking, <laughs> I listed that as a challenge as well. Um, because we have this, this compensation model built in, our teachers um, are given a stipend upon earning a micro-credential. It's a $200 stipend. And then upon completion of that teacher leader pathway, they get a base salary increase. And that is a big commitment. It's a big fiscal commitment. And so this idea of, yeah, those teacher leaders who have completed the pathway are highly incentivized. Like they are motivated because they are getting this district reward, this in-district reward. And a challenge for us is sustainability. We have added, as Michelle was saying, we added the time component mm -hmm. into our contract day this year. And we have seen an increase in earnings. So as we have that increased um, increase in micro-credentials earned, then we have to look at our budgeting plans and look at and see if that policy can sustain. And that is, it is a challenge. We are a small district. We're very committed to this model and we, we believe in it, but we also have to be wise in the way we incentivize when we're looking long-term at, at policy and structures. I'm glad, thank you for letting me share that. Excellent. Um, is there anything else about um, the results of the pilots, either um, with the uh, Ministry of Education there in Israel or in the Tennessee Department of Education? Any other sort of things you can say about results of pilot testing in either place? I'll, I'll just start by. Um, and if our results, I, I'm, I'm going to um, kind of steer away from the date from the data, uh, but just in just wanted to share and emphasize how important the lessons that we have learned are and are and will be for uh, for future implementation of micro credentials in our state. We um, have felt some pressure from different points to um, you know look early on at the quantitative results. Uh, but it was more important to us to really hone in on the lessons that we learned both from teachers and once we added the district uh, district level layer, the, um, what are the conditions under which a district is most successful implementing micro-credentials and what supports do they need from the state, et cetera. So those are, um, the, when, when I hear results, I, I think I know that we're tempted to talk about numbers uh, numbers, but to us, early on uh, in the um, uh, ecosystem of micro credentials, those lessons learned are really and have been the most important results of the work that we've done. Excellent. A anything else from the ministry there? Um, you have any early results? Uh, I think it's too early to say. Okay. It's really yeah. too early. I can just say that. Uh, Last year, it was the, f the first year we had uh, around 40 courses with uh, 1,500 uh, teachers. This year, we have around uh, already, I think, uh, 85 courses, something like this, 87 courses, and around 5,000 teachers. So Excellent. there is interest in it, that's for sure. Excellent. The... Um so one, one question that's come in on the chat, and I think it's a great way to sort of wrap this up, is kind of crystal ball, what's in the future? And in particular, does anybody see the, um, this to, this, uh, the potential of implementing in, uh, for students or, or how this will translate to credentialing for students? Sometimes we also think about the workforce, but let's think about um, you know, students in particular, but um, uh, any, any other, other thoughts in your crystal balls? <laughs> Okay, I, I can uh, I can add something about it. I don't know about uh, students in teacher training yet. 
I'm, if, you, if that's what you meant uh, by students. I think micro-credentialing uh, for students, yeah. like other kinds of skills. Yeah, of yeah, yeah, that's what, that's what I mean. So I don't know about it yet, but I can say that if I'm looking where, where we're going to be in five years, uh, I think that we, we have an evaluation uh, system for teachers mm -hmm. with around 50 uh, components that teachers need. So the idea that every principal will sit with the teacher, he give them an evaluation, and then the teacher can go and for each one of the components, he has a variety of uh, micro-credentials in, in, in an area of, I don't know, 1,000 courses that he can just create out of it something, and it will be just the, the basic uh, things that every teacher has. Yeah, excellent. Other crystal ball, final, final comments on, from your crystal ball. Yeah, Dahlia. Dahlia, go ahead. Yes, yes, yes I, I, I opened that. Okay. Um, I think that, um, you know, in Israel now it's nighttime, so I can dream. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my dream is that, uh, um, you know, it's... Uh, Micro-credential uh, will be a way uh, that uh, the teachers, uh, they, they, will, they will create courses by themselves, you know, small courses. So if one of the teacher uh, will find any, you know, uh, any way of uh, teaching that uh, he thinks that it's very good, he can, he can make or create a, a small course and to share it, with the, with the, his partners, with his colleagues, uh, but this is a dream. So um, I think that um, you know YouTubers are now very popular, and and especially for young people. But I, I can see teachers as 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 YouTubers that they share their courses to to the other uh, teachers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, peer peer teaching, Crystal. <laughs> I share this dream. I, I have seen early successes already in um, teachers increasing collaboration and learning together. And I think as we continue down that path, um, as teachers increase their skill set and confidence in this space, that they will find ways to recreate that personalized learning experience for our students. And um, I've expressed it before, but that is definitely my hope. And I see pockets of that shift happening already. So. Thank you. And Michelle. Sure, I, I love this question because it really brings micro-credentials full circle for us in Tennessee because the, the pilot that we've done over the past three years dating back to 2016, actually the idea of it was birthed in a personalized learning for students mm -hmm. work group. And so our commissioner at the time realized that if we're gonna do this with any type of integrity, and by this I mean offer personalized learning for students, she realized that the teachers would need to um, have experiences firsthand, that most of the teachers in our classrooms have very little experience with personalized learning. And thus, fortunately, it just so happened that at the same time, micro-credentials were making their way into education and becoming uh, more popular. <laughs> um, and so then for us, micro-credentials have really been rooted in, I think, the long-term goal of helping to offer uh, personalized learning for students. But then we had to kind of take this circuitous route in really providing that type of experience for teachers. So I do, uh, Dan, hope that it does, uh, that we are successful in helping it make its way back into a way to offer a variety of learning uh, in a flexible format for, for students. So thank you for that question. Excellent. Well, it is 2019 and uh, the uh, future is bright for education. We do need to apply the very best possible technologies uh, to create a robust and just amazing opportunities for, uh, for everyone across the world, all ages, all stages of life. Um, and this no whole notion of micro-credentialing and, and identifying competencies that people can develop and learn and, and demonstrate um, is powerful. So thank you, everyone. I'm going to turn it back over to our 
fantastic moderator. Um, very different times of uh, different time zones all over the world, and uh, and uh, have a great day, evening, night, uh, wherever you are. Thank you. Thank you very much to everyone. Thank you, Karen. That was great. Um, so this is actually uh, the end of our conference. So thank you for everyone who took part in this. Thank you to Digital Promise. Thank you to Seth um, and really to all our amazing speakers. Um, so thank you very much. We are going to uh, put a link to a short survey in the chat. We would really love to learn how to make better content and make more things. Um, so thank you very much and have a good day. Have a good night. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.